exponential graphs here. So with an exponential graph, it always has a horizontal asymptote, or the parent has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. These don't have any vertical shifts on them, so this graph is also going to have a vertical, or sorry, horizontal tangent at y equals zero. Now in order to graph this, let's draw, let's uh, graph a handful of points maybe. That's usually the best way I like to graph. So take the x, we're going to find an f of x, an output. And as far as making numbers that are convenient, let's go with a zero, and then we'll go down two and up two. So we'll do negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Okay, let's put in some numbers now. So let's go with the zero first. One half raised to the power of zero is always one. Anything to the power of zero is one except for zero. So we get negative one here raised to the power of 1, let's see, plug in 1, 1 half to the 1 is 1 half, and that's got a negative, so I'll put a 1 half there. And then with the 2, 1 half squared, or 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, so I get a negative 1 fourth. So I always plug in 0 first, and then 1 and 2, because it has very little uh, amount of arithmetic. And then negative 1 and negative 2 are just reciprocals, because the exponents that are negative represent reciprocals. So I can take the negative one half answer I got for one, turn this one into a negative two, and do the negative one fourth I got there and call this one negative four. So that gives me a convenient set of values that I can now plug in and be able to draw my graph. Okay, so zero gave me negative one, do that one right there. One gave me negative one half, so I'll have to go in there. Two gave me negative one fourth. Negative one, a little bit to the left, gave me two downwards, so that would be there, negative one comma negative two. And then negative two gave me negative four. So I can see that these dots are starting to align to draw our standard exponential curve. Okay, this is an exponential decay curve, funny enough, but flipped over the x-axis, right? And remember the parent functions, like we talked about in class here, this is the growth but then because the number is one half, which is less than one, we actually have a decay here, but then the negative out in front flips it over the axis. So a lot of functional transformations going on there. Okay, why don't you try the next one on your own? Pause the video, and assuming you give it a good shot here, just like the last one, we don't have any vertical translation, so we'll draw in the asymptote at y equals zero. When we make our t table, x and g of x, we will plug in, the same values as we did last time. Let's plug in a 0, 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2. Because raising things to the 0th power is easy, that always gives me 1. Raising to the first power just makes it whatever the number is, which is 3 halves. And then raising to the 2 means 3 halves times 3 halves, which is 9 fourths. 3 halves times 3 halves. Negative values, reciprocals. So negative 1 gives me 2 thirds and negative 2 gives me 4 ninths. Okay, plotting these now. 0 gave me 1, so that's right there. I think I do these in blue. Uh, 1 gives me 3 halves, so that's 1 and a half. So I guess I'll go to about there, somewhere between 1 and 2. 9 fourths is 2 and a quarter, so when I stick in 2, I need 2 and a quarter. So I'll go up to like there-ish. And then for the reciprocals, 2 thirds is about 0 0.6, and 4 ninths is about 0.4. So this graph looks like it is growing like this. So it looks very much like the parent this time, because notice that the number 3 halves is indeed bigger than 1. 